What is good, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the K Reviews podcast. To my right, we have returning Lucas. Hello. A.K.A. Lucas J. A.K.A. The Bearded Dragon. A.K.A. The Bearded Dragon. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Quarenta or Quarenta. Quaranta. It's Italian, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the Italians say. Uh, yeah. Quaranta. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quaranta by Danny Brown. Um, this is his sixth album. Yeah, that sounds good. Something like that. Somewhere in that range. Um, but let's just kind of get into general thoughts. So I assume, I assume it's called Quaranta because he's 40 now. Yeah, that was the impression that I got. Yeah, while listening to it. Um, so, what were your what were your kind of general thoughts about like what this album was about? Oof, I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was it was also it's also kind of like a play on words because he made it during quarantine. Okay, so he was turning forty and he was, you know, quarantining. He was alone. He was going down the rabbit hill hole of his like drugs and alcohol and stuff yeah his girl left him and everything he yeah talks about that. yeah so um a lot of life happenings going on mm-hmm. which is which is great and like <clears throat> i don't know if you listen to his podcast either but he always says like when nas came out with albums he always it always inspires him uh-huh you know, because they're so old and they're still coming out with music. Yeah. And I'd say the same, you know, for me, is he's 40 now and he's still making music at this level. Yeah. Is insane to me. Yeah. I think know? it's pretty crazy, too. Yeah. I was going to say, like, the stretch he's on right now from, like, Triple X to this oh, one. Yeah. It's like, how are you still going? Like, you've been... Because yeah. now that that's... Triple <clears throat> X came out in 2012, so, like... He's o- yeah. he's been on over a decade plus run of doing this now. Yeah, and like all the albums are like experimental and unique. So right. Like, yeah, it's super impressive. Yeah, he he really has like mastered his sound, and I will go on record saying that he is the best. He has the best vocals out of any artist. Okay. Just his vocal like range and like what he does with his voice. Because if you listen to him, he sounds regular when yeah. he talks. Yeah. He just sounds like a regular person. Yeah. And then he starts rapping. And he does wild yeah. shit. Yeah. And he sounds like he he's not only gonna sell you crack, but he's on it as well. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's my favorite part about listening to him is yeah. like, it's just like how how does a person sound like that? You know. It's, I never know what to expect. Like. Yeah. I'm always like kind of on the edge of my seat. Like, what is what is he about to do next? Yeah. Like, yeah, and anytime I go to press play on like a new album from Danny Brown, I'm always like, kind of just like expecting to be weirded out at first. Yeah, and then have it grow on me immensely to the point where like I just play it a bunch. Yeah, and it's he's like an album artist too, for you know? sure, for sure. Like he's not making songs just to make them; he's making them to fit within this world that he's creating of, you know, whatever. Um, which I appreciate as well yeah i really like the album um i really think that you know he has progressed to the point where he has mastered his style has mastered rapping really like he could like it's a walk in the park for him like it's he's just on autopilot in, in terms of writing and creating um, which is fun to see because, you know, the autopilot turns into, you know, art. Mm-hmm. But what did you think? I loved it, man. I think I wouldn't say it's like Atrocity Exhibition is like on another level for me as far as Danny's albums go. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wouldn't put it as like quite like on that level as like one of my favorites. But I think it's on par like quality wise with everything else that he's pretty much been putting out like you know what i'm saying i kind of view this on the same level as that even though it's a very different vibe like this is like a much more melancholy and like darker vibe than that one yeah um but yeah man i loved it and i loved what he was talking about too like he addresses the being older thing like being 40 years old he also addresses um like still the trauma that he's dealing with from growing up in detroit even though he's like kind of far removed from that now yeah he addresses uh gentrification yeah um (laughs) he addresses like Again, like, the stuff going on in his relationship, like, his girlfriend leaving him and stuff like that. So, yeah. like, 
yeah as always from danny like he's just super vulnerable um talks about things in like a unique way yeah and so yeah man I, I hella enjoyed this album and like as per usual with danny's stuff like the first time i listened to it like it always takes some warming up to and then once i get over that threshold then i'm like i think i've played this album like seven or eight times yeah 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 it's super easy to just let it run back again and again especially because it is i will say it's kind of hard to hear what he's saying a yeah, lot of sometimes the time. yeah he's just like screaming in a high-pitched voice yeah um but it's good it's fun and i will say it was like it was on par with um the scaring the hose record that he put out earlier this year with jpeg mafia yeah like in terms of bars wise which mm-hmm. is which is interesting because he wrote it during quarantine yeah um and scaring the hose was made recently yeah exactly so, yeah it was made recently and if i if i'm getting this right i'm pretty sure it was after he went to rehab that okay. he made scaring the hose okay with jpeg so so yeah it's it's crazy to see like consistency especially at his age um a lot of people will kind of dwindle off yeah you know? just kind of go or try to and like he he says it too i forgot in which song yeah he'll say uh you know rappers are, are just biting trends yep. and in the olden days you know you'd sell your soul for rock and roll yeah and now they're yeah. selling their booty hole <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is yeah. one of the best lines yeah but, danny's hella funny yeah yeah i was gonna say we could get into like um kind of the specifics of some of these so uh tanthor i mm-hmm. think that's i think it's called that because the band that was sampled in the beat is called tanthor if i'm oh, not mistaken okay i was listening to that and i was i was trying to figure it out on my own i was like i thought it was i thought it was the monster from star wars okay but i'm pretty sure that's a band thumb is what i was thinking of oh okay okay yeah i think i think it's because the band um that they sampled his name Tantor, but that, that beat, makes sense. That beat is insane. Like, yeah, uh, the guitar on that beat and everything, um, and then Danny's just wild inflection while he's rapping over it. The reach one, teach one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's wild. His beats are crazy. Like how he selects his beats. I was listening to Triple X earlier, mm-hmm. and he has a song where it's just the bass line. Yeah. And then his voice, <laughs> yeah. and that's the whole song. Yeah. And then there's like a little bit added, and then that part goes away, and then it's just the bass line again. Yeah. And there's there's no like drums, there's nothing, no piano, it's just the bass line. But he's so creative with like how he flows and emphasizes his words and yeah. stuff. It works every time. Earlier when you were talking about he's on autopilot, yeah. Um, like he's to a point where he's on autopilot no matter what he's rapping on to like he can yeah. rap on literally anything at this point yeah. and i kind of realized that with atrocity exhibition like i already had like you already got that impression with the two albums before that but like with atrocity <laughs> exhibition i realized like oh he can really rap on anything yeah and <laughs> yeah it so doesn't it, matter especially with cool. jpeg like jpeg mafia's beats are not easy to rap no, on to not at all yeah like and they are crazy like he is by f- far, like one of the most gifted producers Anything? of all time. Uh, what were some of uh, some tracks that specifically stuck out to you? Um, the one with Bruiser Wolf. Me too. Yeah, y- YBP. Yeah. Um, and lo- like we were saying earlier, I just before we started, I I like his voice. Mm-hmm. Like he has, so it's so it's so funny. Like there's such a dynamic between them two yeah him and bruiser wolf because danny is so loud yeah. and like obnoxious with his voice and bruiser wolf is so like, like calm yeah, and, and you know, slick. And like, yeah. yeah yeah so it's really it's really funny to hear both of them on the track i'm i want to say sell a bit as well i was thinking that one too i used to sell yeah. a bit yeah that was a nice play on words yeah that he did um, i like mike's verse on that a lot of people don't uh don't like mike because i guess like his voice and stuff is kind of weird oh yeah but i feel like his rhyme schemes are always crazy like, yeah he's uh, he always comes correct every feature i've heard him on i've never checked out like his his albums yet which i need to do yeah but, i've never I, I never heard of him before this or maybe i have and i just just kind of wrote him off but he was a good addition to the song yeah i will say um 
and then Bass Jam, the last one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was an interesting last song. It I was, think, yeah. Because it was slow and like melodic, mm-hmm. which you don't really see from Danny a lot of the time. Yeah, it was it was one that um, definitely caught my attention when it came on. Yeah, um, and I just like play it one more again. It's yeah. just like it's <laughs> yeah. very like jazz cafe for Danny. Yeah, like, I don't know. It doesn't necessarily sound like a jazz cafe, but he's but like there's the snaps and everything in it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like you were saying, it's just very laid back for him. This that one was definitely for the hoes. He's done scaring so? the hoes. <laughs> And he's doing bass jam. I now. don't think I th- I think bass jam would still scare the hose a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> he's scary to the hose, but I don't know. It was nice. Um, those are kind of the three that I stick d- out to me. I did like um on bass jam. It was just kind of funny to hear him say like, "Oh, what it, he says." Uh, early in the morning, play Anita Baker. Yeah, cooking all the eggs <laughs> yeah. with the bacon. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it, I never heard Danny like flow he's, like he's, so yeah, calm like so that. Calm. So I, I definitely like that one too. I thought that was funny. Um, a couple other ones that you didn't mention that stuck out to me. Um, Jen's terrific vacation. That was the one that was all about um, gentrification and stuff. Where he's saying like, oh, when you say it out loud. It makes sense now. Because he'll be like, he, he says like, uh, right there used to be a crack house. Yeah. Now it's an organic garden. Well, I, ju- I just mean the name makes more sense. I saw it and I read it in my mind and I was like, okay. Yeah. I guess. But you said it out loud and it just sounds like gentrification. Yeah. Yeah. Jen's terrific vacation. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's yeah. Cool. Super, super clever play on words. But yeah, um, that one was one of my favorites for sure. Because I, I like the subject matter of it and I feel like. It was one that, like, the mixing was hella wild. Like, he's like, what you gonna do? Yeah, you know? yeah. And it was like, the mixing was wild on that song. So that song hella stuck out it to me. It was pretty creepy. And it gave you a Super sense creepy. of, like, of like when you see new people who aren't really, maybe people you'd get along with or, you know. Yeah. For lack of a better word, like, your class or something. Okay. You see them move in and it's just kind of, it's eerie to you, like. Why are they here? Yeah, because you know? this is just fun for them. Yeah, like exactly. It's not, and this is like a place that's traumatized you, and now it's just yeah, changing. Yeah, right. And so, and so you you kind of like have to think in your head, like, wh- like who's that peeping in my window? You know, th- these people are to their culture is like, let's be friendly. Mm-hmm. You know, we're creating a safe place here yeah whereas you've lived in that place for as long as you can think of and it's never been a safe place yeah and stick to yourself stay out the way yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah. This yeah. Is like this isn't normal reactions from people that you've known and grown up with yeah so and it is interesting because i i don't think i've I, I mean i probably have heard other rappers rap about this but not to this extent like he for like the course of a full song, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I have for a full song either, actually. Yeah, but there, there's definitely been like different themes about it and stuff. But this was entirely, which is interesting because he still has like takes, like opinions and stuff uh-huh. for his age, and you can kind of you can see it in this song. Yeah, his definitely. his opinionated age coming out. Yeah. Um. Which I mean it is fine, but he did it in such a good way. Still, like you can't help but agree. I think that yeah, I think that song is super creative. Like mm-hmm. that was definitely one that hella stuck out to me. Yeah, very well made. Um, the another one that stuck out to me was Shakedown. I just really liked the hook on that one. Um, yeah, it felt like a, something that like I wouldn't expect from Danny. Again, it was like mellow, melodic kind of like r&b kind of feel to it yeah um and he's talking about prison yeah (laughs) yeah the weird mix yeah so i i like that one uh that was another one that stuck out to me um and then of course like ybp is like one of my favorites just that beat is so quirky and like wild and then bruiser wolf's verse is just so sick yeah that song yeah so i would say those are the ones that definitely stuck out to me like the most i think yeah what what would you say is your favorite it's a tough one. Um, it's between 
I think for me, it's between uh, the five and six, YBP and Jen's Terrific Vacation. I think those two back-to-back are, like, my favorite point on the whole album. Yeah. Um, it's been hella stuck in my head, and while I was delivering, listening to it, I was just like, damn, this is such a clever song. I think I'm going to go with Jen's Terrific Vacation. I think I'd say that one was my favorite. Yeah. Um, but YBP is close. Just because that beat is is incredible. And like you said, him and Bruiser Wolf together are cool. I'd take a whole album from them. <laughs> from yeah. them two together. Well, there is, kind of. Oh, there is? Uh, the Bruiser Brigade album. Oh, but, okay. So he's yeah, part yeah, yeah. of... Uh, oh, yeah, you said that. You said yeah, that. well, uh, yeah, that was before we started filming. But yeah, I'll say YBP was my favorite. That's like, that's peak Danny. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I would say Super so weird, like, off... Beat, beat. Yeah, it's so sick, though. And screaming Danny yeah. <laughs> with it, just bars. Yeah. Yeah, that one is super sick. He has really, his bars are, are funny because they like, they creep up on you. Yeah. You don't expect. <laughs> and, that, and that's part of rapping is like to yeah. say the unexpected thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes a good bar. And he does that like a lot of the time. He's so good at catching you off guard. Oh, yeah. Like I'm, I, sometimes I'll even think I know where the next rhyme is going, and then he'll say so, and I'm like, "Wait, yeah, yeah. what?" <laughs> he'll say a word that doesn't even rhyme with it. Yeah, but it'll, he'll make it rhyme. Yeah, and then he just switches the rhyme scheme at that point. Danny's very good at rapping. <laughs> yeah, he's a good rapper. He's a good rapper. Danny's very good at rapping. Yeah. I also really like the beat on Cuarenta too. Um, the way those like drums come in with the little guitar that to kick off the album. I think that's just like a really dark, like, cool way to. To open up the project up. Yeah. Uh, Dark Sword Angel is another one where the beat is just fucking insane. Those synths are wild. Um, yeah. I'm not going to lie. That That's one where I didn't pick up. I don't know if there is a specific subject matter on that one, but I didn't pick up on it. I don't think so. I just kind of took the same bars. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, like a bar I think that's just a bard song. Because what does Dark Sword Angel mean? I don't know. Dark Sword Angel. Spitting on Porsches. Rapping for a mortgage. <laughs> Or a bowl of porridge, I put you into orbit. I, I assume it's like a game or That's something. What, yeah, I was thinking it was like a video game. The uh, My rap's like Tetris, bars keep falling, gotta know where to play some smoke with Dave Chappelle, and he think I laced him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what were some songs that like you maybe don't see yourself going back to, if any? Uh, Down With It. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking too. It, I think it's necessary for the album because he talks about his relationship and everything, Mm -hmm. which is like an important part of his mental state right now. Um, And when I listen to the album, I I still let it play. I don't skip it or anything. But like I could see myself picking like YBP and like Ain't My Concern and Tantor and Dark. Like I could pick these songs out and play them outside of the album. That one I probably wouldn't do. Yeah. It it is sad because uh, it sounds like because from the lyrics he says in the song, he said that... um, like, she was down for him, but in his mind, she was out to get him. Yeah. So, that led him to, like, doing wrong by her. Yeah. And then now he realizes, like, that he lost something that was, like, extremely important to him. And I think that was, like, one of the main things that he was referring to in the beginning of the album when he said, this rap shit saved my life and fucked it up at the same time. Yeah. I think he's referring um, in large part to her leaving because he references it frequently throughout the album. Yeah. In addition to, like, all the drugs and alcohol and stuff yeah partying that kind of got him yeah that i would say that's the only one that really like it's just like a down point in the album yeah and i I wonder if he put it there on purpose because he had ybp and jen's terrific vacation Mm -hmm. and then celibate and shakedown come after it yeah if it definitely feels like it's sandwiched in between like all my favorites yeah what about hanami what'd you think about that I like Tanami. It wasn't one of my favorites. That's the um, can't get time back, time after time. That's that oh, one, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what Hanami is. Do you know what that is? Some sort of Japanese thing is my guess. So here's what it says. In Japan, the ancient tradition of enjoying the beautiful but ephemeral blossoms of cherry trees is called Hanami. So it's like flower viewing, basically. Oh, Oh, I guess it makes sense now. Yeah, this is this is a very uh tranquil album for Danny. Yeah. In comparison to his previous endeavors. Um which I think is cool. It definitely still has the the w- extra 
out there hype stuff too. Yeah. But um, it was definitely, a lot of it was definitely like a more stripped back and like mellow version of him, which makes sense. I think he's 40. You know what I mean? He's just kind of like reaching that point in his life. Yeah. So, um, and also like you said, he made this during quarantine. So being in that spot, like. Yeah, it was a very seclusive time. Yeah. Um, so. He was probably digging deep often. His style's not for everyone, I don't think. No, I don't think so at all. I think there's a lot of people who would instantly put this album on and be like, why do you like this? I'd just be like, yeah. it's just not for you, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just not going to get it. <laughs> yeah. If you can't, you can't convince someone. No, not on with the, On their first listen, <laughs> if they listen to this, you can't convince them they like it. Yeah. It, when makes, did, it makes sense why he's not commercial. Oh, yeah. He even said, um, I think it was on Dark Sword Angel, he said the... Um, I'll probably never win a Grammy or reach the top of no charts or something yeah. like that. He said something about, um, this is not for executives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't make that kind of music, but like, yeah, I don't think he should. I think he's, I think he's doing exactly what he should be doing. No. Yeah. He's definitely a guy who knows where his lane is and stays in it. But at the same time, like pushes the boundaries of it. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah, Danny's on a, a super sick run right now, dude. I think um, as far as, like, rappers from our generation, I think he's top 10. I just six albums straight at this point, and all of them are of at least similar quality to each other. Yeah. I, I gotta I gotta give respect to that. Who, for sure. who else in this generation? I would say would Ken, put- Kendrick has to be in there. Okay. I would say Earl probably should be in there. I would put Mac Miller in there. I would put, um, I think most people would put J. Cole in there. Okay. Depending on who you are, you probably put That's Drake in there. I guess they are in that same generation, huh? I, yeah, I look at yeah. them as like the people who came up around like 2010 to like 2014, like when that yeah. was the their come up. Yeah, like, I look at sense. that as our generation because that's when that's like when we were middle school and high school. Yeah, he was. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I remember when he was on One Train. Yeah, that yeah. was a crazy song for him to be on. Yeah. That song is and, wild. Yeah. And even then, like, he did his own thing. Like, yeah. he wasn't trying to, you know, really uh, compete with those guys on yeah. that album, which is insane, like, to see that consistency from then to now. Mm-hmm. Like, he's still doing the same thing. Yeah. He's just better at it. Yeah. And has just kind of expanded it, like, yeah, gone into different styles with it. Yeah. But he's still, like, experimenting with his voice in the same ways and still, like, just... Yeah, doing him to the fullest extent. Final thoughts. Um, another great album from Danny Brown. I hope he just keeps going. Um, I'm super grateful for the music he's already put out. And Danny, if for some reason you see this, good shit. Yeah. Um, I want another album with Peggy. That would be sick too. Yeah. Scaring the hose too. Just do. Just copy. Run the jewels. <laughs> entirely and just do just make four one two three four five six until we get bored of it because you guys quite literally are the perfect combination for scaring the hose music like yeah the <laughs> only way the, the only hose. way it's such a good name the only way you can scare the hose anymore is to add earl to the group like that would be oh, the yeah, only yeah, way yeah, that yeah i don't think you should do that though but um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah danny if you're watching this uh i sent you a freestyle over I want to say eight months ago to your podcast. Oh, to his podcast. And you haven't listened to it or maybe you haven't, you didn't like it. And if that's the case then that's fine, <laughs> it's completely understandable, but shit, Danny, maybe I'll send in a freestyle. Do something podcast. about it or don't to your podcast. It wasn't, it wasn't that great of freestyle, but it was good. Uh, go search Kenny Moss on anywhere you listen to music. Um, Head to the links in the description to check out any other podcasts that I do. And go follow Luminous Records Instagram. And that's it. Go follow Danny Brown. Go follow Danny Brown. Go listen to the podcast. Go listen to the album. Go Let f- us know what you think about it. What were you about to say? Go find Danny Brown in Austin and tell him that he made a good album. Because he did indeed make a good album. Austin, Texas, 41307 Patty Street. Does he live in Austin, Texas? Yeah. How do you know that? Thanks for watching.